Hey, it's Noel Christopher. Another update about the housing market this time. And this is, uh, relates to single family rentals. So I'll explain that. But, uh, CoreLogic came out with some numbers today about 4.8% increase year over year in values, which is great. What's interesting is they're now predicting that house prices in the next year are going to drop 6.8%. Um, I'm going to talk about some other data that points to some different numbers there, but a lot of trepidation about COVID, about job losses and things like that that could affect the house prices. And it actually might be a good thing for them to cool off because they've really been accelerating. And 6.8% or 4.8% is pretty aggressive. It's above the norm, above the 50-year average, which is about 3.4%. So you have to look at that a little bit. They also talk a lot about the discount or the premium over the peak of 2006. I don't really like to use those numbers. 2006 was fueled by a lot of speculation. So if they're saying we're about 13% nationally over the peak in 2000. 2006, we're actually probably a lot higher. So that's really interesting. The appreciation is really led by some states you wouldn't really think. Wyoming, West Virginia, Missouri, and then of course, uh, Arizona. Wyoming has been leading this all through, I mean, sorry, Idaho has been leading this all through 2018 and 2019. And uh, it's, it's a hot market there. It's a beautiful place. A lot of people loving it. And Arizona has just been aggressively going up in pricing. So that's a good thing. So again, they're predicting a national price decline due to COVID. This could be a boon for investors. So it's interesting to think about that and to think about rents leveling off a little bit, prices maybe going down a little bit. That's going to give an opportunity for a lot of investors to buy if we can get some more inventory. Uh, John Burns came out with some new home sales data. And uh, some of this is publicly da publicly available data and some of it isn't. Home builders basically had a record May and June. It's going to be curious how this will continue if new home prices are going to continue to go up, but resale prices level off or flatten, or if, or if all prices are going to go down in the next year. I'm not quite sure what I think about that. I guess a lot depends on COVID and what happens and things like that. New home sales jump 55% year over year, record numbers. Starts are up 14%. 57% of home builders have raised prices. Again, this is from John Burns, so I give some, give some credit there. So builders just can't keep up with the demand. There's supply chain issues. There's COVID, social distancing, material costs increases. Local jurisdictions aren't open, so they can't get these homes sold fast fast enough. You have more people that want to want to do the quick closings and they're having a tr trouble keeping up with this. And theoretically, new sell or resales would benefit from this. But because a lot of people are holding back of putting their homes on the market, um, there's a lot of demand from buyers. It's keeping the prices up. And so CoreLogic is predicting that's going to change. And that gets into the next question I know a lot of people have. It's about foreclosures. Are there a lot of foreclosures coming? So I'm going to talk about forbearance. We're about 8.5% of loans are in forbearance. If you think about the last recession, I mean, every one of these would have to go into foreclosure for there to be an issue. The big difference is only 9% of all the loans in forbearance have less than 10% of equity. In fact, about 70% or, or over 70% have approximately 40% in equity. So this means that it's really interesting if we continue to have job losses and it's forcing people to sell their house. There's a lot of equity to sell. And so this would be a boon for investors. And maybe this is where core logic, I haven't looked into this deep enough, is thinking that the numbers are, are, are going, the, the values are going to go down because you're going to have a lot more people have continue to have job losses. They're going to want to sell their houses, but they have equity. And this is a great thing. And this might help with investors. So just some quick insights there. Um, I think that there is such a demand for homes right now, uh, especially in the new construction where we're working in and, and finding those home builders that the, the funds are having a hard time getting to them. And that's why we're now they're back looking at, at, at portfolios of homes. Uh, but I think that prices leveling off and even going down for the next year and then maybe going back up with rents predicted to stay pretty flat but then start to tick back up in uh, in 2021, this could be a perfect storm for investors to be able to buy at a little bit lower cost basis, but with the rents con continuing to stay strong, meaning the yields will go up, which have been pretty low. The gross yields have been pretty low, averaging about 8% uh, nationally. Quick update, leave a comment. Appreciate your time.